I really was going to name this video something else, but after watching it all the way to the end, I now think I'm going to name it something like the dumbest stuff that I've heard. Maybe 50 minute compilation of the stupidest stuff that I've ever heard. And then about 45, 50 minutes, you'll see why. But if you stop watching, I'll understand because it's it gets pretty dumb at the end. Extremely stupid. It's the long awaited singer man update. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you guys, but we are no longer seeing each other and we haven't been for a couple weeks now. So here's what happened. He was doing all the right things. We had gone on three dates on our second date. He had mentioned that he had a race coming up like running half marathon situation and i think it was like local to where i live and he had mentioned like oh you should come to it and you know this is the second time ever seeing this man and so i was like oh yeah maybe like that you know we'll see then the race comes around i had said i'm so excited for your race and i met i'm excited for you for your race but he's like are you coming and to me, I was like, that feels very girlfriend territory. And I've always done way too much too soon. And so for me, me standing on the sidelines of a marathon, cheering a man on that I've only been on a few dates with just seemed too like not what I should be doing. So I said, oh no, I meant I'm excited for you for your race. And then he didn't reply. I texted him the day of and I said, today's the day, I hope it's great. And I didn't hear back. And then I said, maybe that was the day before, regardless. And then I said, I hope it went really well in that evening. Never heard back, that was a couple weeks ago. So of course not. I don't know, I could be speculating. So he could, it could have been, it could be something else. But what it feels like to me is this guy was also doing a lot of like grand gestures. He got me that huge bouquet. He also did a couple other things for me. Maybe this is what I can read into it and I could be wrong. Okay. Maybe he felt like it wasn't being reciprocated because to me, I'm not there yet. After going out a few times, like I'm not, and this I've worked so hard to get to this point where I'm not getting like wrapped up in someone that I don't know yet. So I wish him well, but I'm not in the business of chasing men down. So. Yeah, as of right now, I am seeing no one. So it's been kind of nice. I've been reading books. <laughs> I've read like four books, <laughs> which is great. So I'll schedule some dates soon, but that's that's the update. Why? I, I think this, this is self-sabotaging behavior. I have a little bit more strong language that I want to use, but I won't use because I don't want to be rude. The man bought you a bouquet of flowers and you thought that that was doing too much. The man took you out on a date, was saying all the right things. And really, honestly and truly, he just wanted you to come to the race and watch him. That's another connection point. I don't feel like as a girlfriend, I should be cheering for him. You mean after he went and bought you a bouquet of flowers, a huge bouquet of flowers, and you still don't want to just come to a race for like 30 minutes? And hey, go John, or however you want to say it, whatever his name is. Do you think that's doing too much? Who told you that? And then you want to say, well, it's because I worked myself into this position so I don't get wrapped up. You're not getting wrapped up in anything. You're just going to a race. Stop acting weird. That I mean, you guys are just at this point, modern women are just talking themselves out of relationships and then wondering why they can't find a man. This is pathetic. Okay, bye. I recently had the pleasure of hearing guys talk about women that they are talking to, um, not censoring anything. Basically, like they were talking as if I wasn't there listening or as if I wasn't a female who would give a f um, I wish that upon no one, actually. When you hear the way that some men talk about women they're dating to their male counterparts, you will actually be so appalled. Mm -hmm. So appalled. I'm going to preface this by saying I didn't say anything. 
um, because I wanted to hear what, how they, I wanted to hear how they spoke about the person that they're dating. Um, I don't, I don't know that I have, I have words for it. The one guy spoke about his girlfriend as if like he got her at a toy store. Like, like, I, I, I don't even have the words to explain how, how, how horrible it was. It was like, it was like she was a doll, not a human being, um, very much replaceable. So what are some of the things that he said? Just as an example, since they said so much. It was weird. It was so weird. And I'm like, I, one, can't believe that I'm hearing this. Two, is this how people speak about, because this isn't how my friends talk about their boyfriends. It's not. And just hearing their conversation, like hearing, hearing how they view women, it, it made me think like, what do, is this how men view women? Like not, not humans, like replaceable, just fits the mold for now. It was so jarring. It made me feel so uncomfortable. I didn't, I didn't have any words. Like there were no words. I hope no one else has experienced that. I never want to experience that again. I'm happy I did. I dumb take, super dumb take. It's dumb because it's ignorant. Out of all the women out here talking about, well, you don't want to be in the group chat. These women out here be eating a man up in the group chat. A woman has to fight and defend herself from her choice of what man or whatever man she picked. Oh, he's ugly, girl. Be happy. He has potential. That's happening in the group chat. And this is women admitting, women admitting how they talk about men. And you want to say it's just men doing it? You want to say that men are so heinous that they're committing a, a heinous crime for this and that men are just an issue in this country? Get a grip. Eye opening. Trying to date a single mom be like, when can I see you again? Like, I am going grocery shopping for 45 minutes after work if you want to come with me and chat while I get groceries. But then I have to pick my kid up after that. So I'm going to have to drop you off, you know. But other than that, uh, maybe Friday at three. <laughs> you know, all the men I've dated in the past four years are always like, oh my God, like, I'm glad I met you. I don't regret the time we had together. I think you're such an amazing person. I respect so many things about you. There's so many things I admire about you. You have so many great qualities, blah, blah, blah. They all say the same shit. They also always say, oh, without you, I wouldn't have learned all these things about myself. And I'm just like, okay, what about me? What the hell did I get? What did you give me? All I got was trauma and more trust issues. And because of you, I have to go back to therapy. So thank you for that. I don't need no apology. I'll be sending you a weekly Venmo charge for my therapy. Don't worry about sending me any charge. You should be so happy that I was in your presence. I should be sending you a charge because I'm the king. Drizzle, drizzle. Isn't that what you women say? You should be so happy that I'm hanging out with you to be in your presence. You should be so happy that I'm giving you my energy, that I'm talking to you. And that is why you should pay for my meal. <laughs> but then now you're saying a man is wasting your time and you're upset about it. That's interesting. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I just been on vacation and on PTO, but I'm about to call y'all out. I'm about to call y'all out on something. Y'all remember when I made that man versus bear and the girls were so upset when I said that y'all could be trapped in the woods with the bear and you got a better chance of the bear trying to holler at you. And that when you go out, men don't be trying to talk to you. You, you, you remember how all y'all was stitching me and telling me about how y'all get dudes and how dare I question that dudes be coming up to you and trying to holler at you and shooting they shot at you. Yet there's a video going around right now that's going viral about a pretty girl who talking about how she don't get hollered at when she go out how dudes don't try to talk to her and then you got multiple pretty girls stitching the video and talking about how dudes don't approach them either when they go out they but i was lying i was lying though right when y'all was making all them videos i hope y'all still got it on y'all page where y'all was making all of these responses to me and telling you about how all these dudes be beating your door down to harass you every time you go out yet y'all online now complaining because dudes don't in actuality be bothering you when you go out Yet you do sometimes be wanting dudes to say something to you when you be out, be out but they don't, right? 
Y'all, y'all, that, that's, that's the reason why I say the stuff I do about y'all. That's the reason why I go on PTO and I take breaks from this app. Because y'all just be saying anything, right? You just be wanting to be mad. Because the stuff don't be a lie. The stuff be the truth that you don't want to face. When I said that the dudes don't be bothering you when you go out, I wasn't implying that y'all wasn't attractive girls. I wasn't implying it was because you was not cute. I was telling the truth. Most of y'all are not getting harassed when you go outside. You're not even getting asked for your number. And it don't got nothing to do with your looks or anything else. The dudes just ain't doing it no more. And can you really blame them? All y'all do is get online and bash men 24-7 and talk about how horrible they are. And then turn around and wonder why don't nobody want to say nothing to you when you be out. Be, be for real. Men don't approach you and I'm going to give you three reasons why they don't. The first reason why they don't is because you are sending the invisible energy telling them to stay back. You are sending the energy because you are afraid of getting hurt. You're afraid of getting rejected or afraid of getting abandoned. And because of that, they're picking up on that signal and staying away. The second reason why men are most likely not approaching you is because you're highly in your masculine energy. So men who are in their masculine energy aren't going to be drawn to you. If they are a straight man, they're going to be drawn to a woman who is in her feminine energy because it's not an equal match when you're in your masculine energy. And then the last reason why men are not approaching you is because you're walking around looking like this. Ma'am, when you walk around with an RBF face, then what that does is it turns everybody away. It makes people think you're mad. And you might think you're doing the modeling face, ma'am, but your face isn't giving what you're trying to give it. So if you want people to approach you, then you're going to have to look approachable. And one of the ways you can start is by putting a smile on your face that tells people you're open for them to approach you. I hope that helps. Why are you reporting yourself? I don't know. What? Yeah, here's a fill to counteract. That feels making you nervous. Then you should do this. Yeah, no, can't oh, trust wow. me. Like, this... This is about the point of your conversation. You know, people start looking at me and going, Okay, dude, like, you're crazy. It's that cross around your neck. Oh, yeah. That's good. You go to church? Stop me, man. I think he's asking me many personal questions, and I'm kind of scared. You like tacos? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah? You like tacos? I do, actually. I have a really good taco spot. It's right across the street. Mm. You want to grab some tacos sometime? Um, I'm very busy. Oh, my God. I'm better to be the back and away from the top at the time of the month. I'm better do it again, better do it again. That shit with a song. Why are being a big. Hold on. Let's go back to this video quick. Me practicing standing up for myself to guys at the gym because my comment said so. Your comments were full of ignorant people talking about hip. Let's go back and read this. Literally have no idea what he's talking about. I'm just agreeing with him. This is about the point of the conversation. He's talking about he's being crazy. I think he's asking way too many personal questions and I'm kind of scared. He just asked if you went to church because you had a cross on your neck. Then he asked, do you like tacos? I know a taco spot across the street. This is not weird. You said the man awake. Did I, did I see that wrong? Sees man waving at me. So he's getting your attention before just popping up on you at the gym. And he comes over and has a conversation with you. And it looks like based on how you do this conversation that you cut out parts of the conversation. I'm guessing for brevity's sake. But you're saying he's asking too many personal questions without showing us what he's actually asking. And then saying he doesn't know how to approach a woman. No, silly. This is exactly how you approach a woman. You get her attention and then you approach 
and you say, hey, how's it going? And he struck up a conversation. He was looking and noticing a lot of stuff that you had. Oh, I see you have a cross. So he's not looking at your chest. He's not looking at your behind or ogling you or objectifying you. He's trying to connect with you by saying, oh, are you a Christian? I see you have a cross on your neck. You don't want to talk about it. He talks about other things not related to you. Still trying to talk, strike up a conversation. Sounds like he's talking about politics and the government. And then he expresses to you that he's kind of embarrassed because there's nothing really going on and people might think he's crazy because once again, here you are proving him right. You're putting him all over the internet, trying to make it seem like he's out here creeping and stalking you when he's actually not. And then he says, hey, do you like tacos? Yeah, sure. I like tacos. What about you? Man, I love tacos. Actually, I know a good taco spot across the street. You want to go get tacos sometime? That's exactly how you would ask a woman if you had some common sense. But unfortunately for you, you don't have that common sense. So you think that every man coming up to you is a creeper and a stalker. And that's why you make these stupid videos like you did the one over here talking about standing up for yourself. There's nothing to stand up for. There's nothing to defend. You can just politely say no and then leave it at that. You don't have to record him and try to get people on your side and try to build your following by crapping on men when they did nothing to you. You're trying to want it. You, you, if you don't want the man to approach and just say, hey, you know what? No, thank you. And leave it at that. Don't try to blast him online. What a loser, dude. Why is being a big girl in a friend group on a night out such an exhausting experience? I went out last night with my friend and all of my friends are 10 out of 10s, which I love for them and I love for me also. And it was so alarming to me how many men would come up to my friend trying to holler at her and completely ignore me. And this is not a new experience. Like I've experienced this multiple times, but it just alarmed me because I don't be going out like that. And I'm like, wow, people are still acting like this. Like really in 2024, the year of our Lord, like, and like, it's such an interesting tactic because it's like, I don't need you to entertain me. A simple hello introduction is fine, but completely ignoring my existence is just very odd to me. And it's like a very interesting approach. It's like, do you think this is getting you brownie points with my friend? Like what? Because if it was me and you completely ignored one of my friends, it's a wrap. Like I'm never speaking to you. But when guys do that, I hold a grudge for life like even if this goes somewhere i will never acknowledge your existence in my entire life like i will stand on business till i die and never speak to you again you couldn't speak to me at first jump i will never speak to you again truly and but it doesn't matter because they weren't speaking to you in the first place number one number two we have data somewhere that says that 80 percent of the time a woman is not noticing a man doesn't even cross her radar so yes Men do, in fact, go through this type of behavior from women, probably women such as yourself. So here you are talking about if it was happening to me, then I wouldn't and what you would and wouldn't do. And it don't matter what you would, wouldn't do, should do, could have done, have done, would have done. It don't matter because they're not over there for you. They're not looking for you. They're not checking for you. You can be quiet now. I'm so glad that I have done work to just become more secure in myself because I know I looked good hell last night. Nobody can tell me otherwise, but I know back in the day that would not have been the case. Like I would have felt so insecure. I would have felt so down about myself and been like, oh my God, like, what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything. It just means that people are fun. I just hate that this is an experience that so many of us have to go through just because we are not what people are attracted to. It's weird. Honestly, it's odd. What? I'm going to put that American Idol clip in uh, of a, a contestant. Mary Roach, it was on one of the American Idol bloopers where everybody, she was terrible and everybody denied her, <laughs> denied her and she got mad and she, I don't care about your opinion. And then afterwards she was like, but still the fact that they said that, that doesn't make me want to pursue singing at all. Exactly. Because you can't sing. I feel the earth move. Honestly, one of the worst I've ever heard in my life. The worst? Yep. I'm never gonna pursue my singing career again. I do. I'm not gonna lose it. I'm not gonna start crying. The fact that they said that, that doesn't make me want to pursue any kind of singing career. Not unless I'm gonna be a lead singer in a rock band. 
gonna be a pick me right now because we be knowing what's gonna happen. We just don't care, and that's the problem. I care, but y'all don't care, and that's the problem. Cause it's not fair. Cause we be knowing. Y'all energy change, y'all mood change, y'all vibe is different when y'all are unhappy. Y'all are. I can tell when a man is depressed. I can tell when a man is depressed. I can tell when a man is unhappy with work, all of that stuff. I can tell. So if I can tell, y'all can tell, and y'all are selfish. So yeah. As soon as a woman calls herself independent, that's a red flag to me. We don't like independent women. We do like self-sufficient women, but there's a major difference between the two. We don't mind self-sufficiency. A woman that has her own career, her own place, cars, money, businesses, we don't mind that. But the minute you start to idolize your independence is where we see red flags because there's a certain spirit that comes along with that. It's the I don't need anybody paradigm. Let's flip it. How would women feel if they met a man and every time he spoke, he sounded like, I pay my own bills and they're all in my name. I live on my own. I don't need nobody. She'd probably say like, bro, you're an adult. You're supposed to, you're supposed to do that. Like, are you good? Like, is there a chip on your shoulder? Like, but even deeper to the point, I'll never make my woman feel like I don't need her. Can you imagine how I would look to a woman who liked me if I walked around shouting how independent I am or how I don't need anybody? Like, imagine how that would make her feel. Nah, I'm waking up every day and reassuring her that I want her, I desire her, and I need her. I'm not a weak man for admitting I need my woman. But I'm worried that some women are so attached to that independent teaching that they're going to independent themselves right into a lonely life. Or worse, form an attachment but still perceive the relationship through an independent field of view. If you're a woman in your late twenties, please listen to me. Yeah, I'm also in my late twenties, and I'm witnessing. I'm witnessing people settle. I'm witnessing people lower their standards. I'm witnessing people think that there's something wrong with them because they've never been in a relationship. Women that are talented, smart, educated, body, tea, money. She gets money. And you think that because you haven't met the love of your life yet, that there's something wrong with you or that you're seeing the people around you find love or most of the time settle that now you need to join them. You don't. Stay focused, please. It's not that uncommon to not have ever been in a relationship in your late 20s. A lot of people I know have never been in a relationship. They are accomplished, amazing, beautiful women that have absolutely nothing wrong with them. Your worth is not defined by you finding a partner at all. It's luck. It's got nothing to do with you as a person. This is what I'm up to. This is what I'm telling you. Because you're not deluded like me. You're supposed to feed it. Like, if I say, oh my God, he looked at me for like one second, you're supposed to say, when is the wedding? If I say he blinked in my direction, you're supposed to say, what is the name of your guys' child? Mm -hmm. If I say, yeah, he hasn't talked to me in like three months, but he saw Biggest my story. Because he loves you so much and like, that's he why. That no, he's stopped, you're gonna break literally, his fucking heart. he stopped talking so to me. So he like decided to remove himself. He stopped like, talking he's to me probably because like he dying knew on if he gets right on now. talking to me, he will fall in love. No, he fell in love. That's Already. the problem. Yeah. Was that right? Yes. You see, you're not supposed to say, was that better? You're supposed to say, you see? And that's what I meant the whole time. Yeah, okay, good. I told you so, you know, I hate to say, but I told you so. Happiest people are single women and married men. They're the two happiest groups of people always. Single women and, and married men. Are the happiest. I've been the happiest groups of people. Like not married women. Married women like end up doing all the jobs and you know, married women aren't happier than single women. Single women are happier than married women. And married men are really happy because they get everything done for them. Perfect. But I feel like I was raised to be a wife in a generation full of men who barely even want girlfriends. All right, so I tried to put this in a minute long video, but it, there are too many nuances and complexities to put it into a minute long video. So I'm going to try to explain it here. So remember in relationships, irrespective of what it is that's being told, there are two sides to every story. What do I mean by that? Well, except for certain situations, but in the number of failed marriages that children have seen or boys have seen as they've grown into men, two things usually occur. One is infidelity. And if that infidelity is committed by the father, that boy may not want to make the same mistakes that his father made and thus have to confront that he's more like his father than he would like to be 
which then is a parallel or an alignment to the type of trauma that he experienced from his father. So he will internalize, I am more like my father than I would like to be, and it creates a trauma response. If the mother was infidelious, of course, it creates a distrust of women and their ability to stay committed to the husband, who seems like the hardworking, hard-natured father that he is. Now, the second thing is a little bit more common, and it's usually unresolved trauma between a man and a woman who decide to stay married. What happens in that space is that the entire institution of marriage seems like a sham. Not only that, this young man identifies how it is that both his mother and his father are utilizing particular behavioral patterns that feel very chaotic and don't align with the perception of love and safety that could potentially be within a marriage or a committed relationship. So once again, an aversion is developed. Now, a third thing that may happen is this. There are some men who may not want girlfriends because of the psychological pressure that it places them under to be the man that they say that they are. And by and large, I think this is the largest reason why a number of men avoid relationships or committed relationships with just one woman. Because in a lot of ways, that woman is going to prompt him to perform the patriarchy in ways where he may not be able to or is not equipped to. Now, does that mean that this man is weak or he is not able to you know, manage the responsibilities of a relationship? Not necessarily. What it could imply is that this man does not have the emotional intelligence quotient to navigate himself within himself for himself, which then makes him angry when other people challenge him to be the projection of himself that he says that he is, which then creates the cognitive dissonance, which tends to manifest as offense or anger when a woman identifies the inconsistency in the manhood that they project instead of the duties that they are performing in order to get to that point of manhood that they are projecting from themselves. So because this is a particular type of ego rejection within the self of the man, and because a number of men do not have the emotional intelligence skills to navigate that type of rejection, they rather not engage in relationships at all. And that's when men usually start blaming women for how it is that they feel, because women hold them accountable to the men that they say that they are. Oh my Do you think so, huh? You think it's all because of the patriarchy? You think that's what it is? It's a lot of word salad just to say, maybe a woman on her side should look at the things that she's doing. Maybe a woman on her side should look at the things that she's saying to a man. We're all in some point in, some point in time, however you slice it, going to have trauma. But when you work through it, you can work through it to a certain level but you're going to have triggers and trauma that you don't even know exist in a relationship. But what would help is if you would work on it together. If you pick a partner and you choose a partner, hopefully you've chosen a partner that knows how to deal and help you manage those things or is willing to learn how to help you manage those things. But too many modern women, which is why men quote unquote blame them, come in and instead of uplifting they put their foot down on a man oh you ain't got no money trash oh you, you ain't this height trash oh you look like this ain't got no education trash i would never want to talk to you and a man is saying to her wait i have more value than that maybe i'm not perfect maybe there's things some things that i have to improve on and get better on but we can help each other and let me let me give you my value add. This is what I can do for you. And I'm seeing maybe this is what you can do for me. And this is how we can grow together. But it's not good enough because you're not six foot. You don't have any money, not the money that I want. And you don't be in the same social circles that I want to be in. And that is people with money, the upper class, celebrities, right? Nothing wrong with wanting to elevate yourself. But the way modern women put men down, that's what makes them in a lot of different situations not want a girlfriend. But I guess whatever you're talking about is good as well. Favorite arguments that some men have is, I'm a good man and no one appreciates me, so I'm just going to become a passport bro. Or I'm giving up on dating and I'm just going to pay a schmags worker instead and have zero aggravation. <clears throat> no, you're not. You're not a good man, you're a transactional man. You expect that if you're good or nice or jump through all of these hoops, you will get something in return. And if you are that kind of a man, 
then you are, just own it. But the mark of a true good man or woman, a good person, <clears throat> is will you be kind? Will you be good to another when that person is not being good or kind to you? Tossing your hands in the air and having a tantrum saying you're going to take your toys and go to a different playground does not make you a good playmate. It just makes you manipulative and it exposes you as someone who only behaves well when it's for their own gain. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. I am going to take my toys and go somewhere else because I'm not going to continue to let somebody play with my toys and they don't allow me to play with theirs. They never reciprocate. I'm not going to allow somebody to come over, play with my toys, break my toys and then take their toys and leave without repairing my toys. I am not going to come over to somebody else's toys. Hey, can I can I play? Hey, yours look yours look pretty interesting. No, what are you even doing over here? I don't even want you even looking at my toys. And then you embarrass me to use your little analogy that you have going on. I can be kind somewhere else and go exchange friendship with people who actually value who I am. So it's not necessarily manipulation because that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to set a boundary for you and make you understand you're not going to keep on acting stupid around me. You're not going to keep on acting foolish around me. You decided to come over here with your toys and then say, I'm going to play with yours. And actually, I'm going to take yours and add them to my collection. But you ain't going to get anything that I got. That's the same thing as a woman going on a date with man. Oh, you're going to pay for every single thing here. But I'm not going to reciprocate anything. Just the fact that I came here means that you should be I'm the anointed one. So you should be happy. Absolutely not. What is that man going to get in return? And I'm not talking about intimacy. I'm talking about what kind of conversation are you having? Are you enriching your life with his are you enriching his life, excuse me, with your presence? And the answer for a lot of modern women is absolutely not. You just sit there. You're boring. You don't have anything to talk about. Number one, number two, you don't even talk about the things that he wants to talk about. You just talk about how you're killing it. You're a boss, babe. You're a strong, independent woman. Don't need no man. But I'm in this time of my life where I want to be a soft girl. Don't want to hear none of that. So, yes, at that point in time, I'm taking my ball, toys, and the whole playground and going home, regardless of whether you think it's manipulation or not. Why don't you get on here and talk about another of my controversial opinions, which is that there's no point in romance. Um, tell me what the point of romance is. Tell me what the point is, right? You date, you court, you get those giddy, excited feelings. You know, when I had a girl comment on one of my posts, she was like, I just want to feel that giddy excitement again. And here's what I want to tell the women out there, right? You were part of that giddy excitement, right? Like you felt that because you, the essence of you was a part of that dynamic with that man. Whoever you felt, or woman, whoever you felt giddy and excited with, you were a part of that. So whenever you think, oh, I just wanna feel giddy and excited again, feel giddy and excited about who you are. It is time that women take their power back and understand their full value if we understood that we hold the power within us that we don't have to change who we are we the, the the behavior problems that we may see with women are a product of women living in an oppressed state for centuries thousands of years centuries i'll say centuries because of civilized society i don't know what the gender dynamics were like pre-civilization romance there's no point it's a manipulation tactic that a man uses to get you to let him spread his seed in you so that he can spread his genetics. That's what he's programmed to do. And he will do that with us and wants to do that with as many women as possible. That's why men always cheat, even in happy marriages and relationships, right? Because they have this biological drive. And so as a woman, you have to decide, do you want that? Understand that even modern civilized men are not going to be able, most of them, you know, and I get a lot of comments on here that are like, oh, well, my husband this, my husband that. You are the exception. 
congratulations. And I, from the bottom of my heart, I really am happy for you. Like, love that for you. Good. For the rest of us out here, that is not reality, okay? So, and then I hear, I hear as well, oh, well, you just haven't found the right man. Do you know how many dates I've been on? Do you know how many relationships I've been in? Why are there so many men that can't make it work with a woman who on paper, I've got a master's degree, I'm educated, I've got dogs, I've got a, a purpose, I know my purpose, I have hobbies, I'm in, I've been told I'm intelligent, I have an above average IQ, you know, I have by all intents and purposes, what society would say, a decent body, what society would say, right? Which we can argue about that. But like, why? Right? And here's here's what what I think it is. I will not talk, okay? I won't. If a man comes into my life and he's taking, 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 and I'm having to make decisions for the both of us, and I'm having to educate him about very basic dynamics, um, and I'm having to do a lot of giving in order to make it ain't gonna work out and it's gotta go, and I'm gonna cut shit out. I'm not a nice girl that's like, oh, thank you so much. No, I'm gonna call it out. And I've been this way my whole life and people don't like it. I've said this on another post that I'm a professional boat rocker, okay? If there's a boat to be rocked, it's gonna be me. Because I would rather know immediately whether you're gonna start rowing with me or are you gonna make us capsize, right? Excuse me? You're going to go sit down. That's where you're going to go. See, there's a lot of men that don't mind the little aggressive nature that you have. If you're the, hey, let's get it done type, there's a lot of men that like that, but the I'm going to challenge a man. And if you're not wrong with me, you better believe I'm going to call you out. Ma'am, have you forgotten where you're supposed to be? Who's who's the leader in this relationship? Have you forgotten that? What are you thinking? Go sit your silly behind down. Go sit your stupid behind down. You're saying a lot of nonsense right now that nobody wants to hear about. You sit up there and said, why does nobody want me? I'm educated. I've got two dogs. I got a pretty nice body. I don't think that I look that bad. And then you give us an exhibit A of why nobody's choosing you. That's why. Because you have an absolutely horrible attitude. Absolutely horrible. Who is going to want to put up with that? Which man? Tell me. I'll sit here and wait. My God. You... The, the video is not even done. I'm tired of listening to you. I'm tired. That's my hot take for today. There's no point in romance. It's not a hot take. It's a stupid take. And you told me you had a bachelor's, you had a, you had a master's, master's degree. And this is what's coming out of your mouth with a master's degree. You going to teach me something when you're saying stupid stuff like this on the Internet with your master's degree, a master's degree in what? Stupidity, ignorance dumbness foolishness what kind of papers were you writing how to be silly 101 seven to eight pages long off top how to be ignorant how to run a man off 30 pages long wrote a whole dissertation wrote a book 150 pages about how to lose a man in two weeks how to make every man not like you how to make every man not want you in 80 days that's what you get your master's degree in. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And if you are a woman out there that is like desperately wanting romance and, and companionship, do some soul searching. What is it specifically that you want out of that? Do you want a child? You can do that without a man. And I'm not saying don't, don't be with men. I'm saying don't let these things control you without really examining whether or not it's in alignment with who you are, right? If you do the examining and you're like, nah, I want to, I want a husband. Okay, girl, we support you. We are all back here behind you hoping for the best. Okay. Just be educated about it. Just do some reflecting and soul searching because I can't tell you another time in my life that I have felt this free. When I freed myself of this narrative that you need to get married, you need to have kids. There are way more fulfilling things that you can do out here on this earth in 2024. Okay, that's my hot take.
take it for what it is. It's a cold take and it's a stupid take. I would never, never be friends with this woman. I never do it because she's bound to say something. She's the type of woman to, if something goes wrong or she sees something that she thinks is suspect, because she doesn't really understand how relationships work. She told you for, I don't know, the last three or four minutes, she don't really understand how romance works. <laughs> I don't even know if she had a man. She, I've dated like this, so don't tell me like this. So if you have a master's degree, once again, why can't you figure out and think critically about what it is about you and those men, both sides, that's not getting you the results and the success that you're looking for? She's going to be the type to jump like, oh, oh no, he's he doing this and, and I would never and lead you down the wrong path to be right out there with her. So if I'm marrying you and you still friends with hey, you have to let her go. I'm serious about that or else we're not getting married. And I, I gave you the reasons too. she's this, she's that, she's this, she's that. And it ain't no on no hating stuff. I just think that she will be detrimental because you're looking for people to actually support not fake support like she's doing a lot of good girls can't find a man because men do not like good girls don't shoot the messenger i'm gonna explain to you why but men do not like good girls so for the purpose of this video when i say good girl i'm referring to a girl who just stays out of the mix minds her business goes to work goes to school doesn't really post too much on instagram or tiktok doesn't really want attention from strangers isn't promiscuous doesn't really show off her body and so on and so forth right and you would think that that is what a man would want but the reality of the situation is that's the opposite of what most of them want why though why don't they like good girls here's a little bit of context these days men are not saying they want to right they say they want to and they use the word bad to explain a woman who is hot or sexy or promiscuous because it refers to the things that she's gonna do in bed which are naughty which are bad right so that's one of the reasons why they don't like good girls is because they think that when you are bad you are going to be better in bed Second is most men these days are not on the hunt for a woman who's going to be a good mother to their children. Most men these days are quick to knock up any woman and let her have his kids without stopping to think, is she going to be a good mother? So that's one of the other reasons why they're not on the hunt for good women. Third is most good girls are predictable. That's why they're good. They're predictable. They follow society's expectations of what a good girl should be. They follow their parents' expectations of what a good woman should be. And that doesn't excite men. We know that men like pain. We These women be getting these degrees and come out just as dumb as the day they went in i mean just exactly i and, and, anyway no that men like toxic women we know that men like problems in their relationships that's what keeps them in it that's what keeps them excited they're sick they're mentally twisted but this is reality this is the reality of the situation that is why the good girls get treated the worst because they're not exciting they're bland they're predictable Fourth is that most bad girls are selfish and selfishness actually makes men work harder to be in a relationship with you because most good girls are people pleasers. Most good girls are satisfied with the bare minimum because they're good, right? They don't want to ask for too much because that's bad, right? These are all things that society made up for us to follow. But when you categorize yourself as a good girl, what you're telling the man is I will go above and beyond to please you. You don't have to go above and beyond to please me because I'm satisfied with the bare minimum. That's not what they want. And that's why the bad girls, the toxic girls, the ones who ask for too much, constantly get provided for, constantly get what they want because men like that. They like having to always reach a little higher. They like having to always do a little more. That's what excites them and keeps them in the relationship. And lastly, most good girls are waiting to be picked and most bad girls don't want to be picked. And that's why the men always go for the women that they know are out of their league because they're like, if I can just get her, if I can just convince her to look at me, if I can just get a minute of her attention. Whereas with the good girl, it's not that much of a reward because the good girl is expecting to be picked. She is waiting to pour her love into someone else. Now, the point of this TikTok is not to make good girls feel like they have to start being bad girls. But if I have one piece of advice for good girls who want to find a man, it's to pretend to be a bad girl. Because to be honest, they're not smart enough to tell the difference. So all you got to do is just pretend that you are a B-I-T-C-H. Okay, and you got to make them work a little harder for your attention, even though deep down inside you want to pour your love into them. You want to give them affection. You want to praise them. You want to please them. That's fine. Those are not bad things. You just can't do it right off the bat because they want to hunt. They want to pursue. They want to be challenged. 
you got to play the game. You got to play the game. If you want a man who actually values you, you got to play the game. You got to make him feel like you could walk away at any minute. So he better cross his T's and dot his I's. You know what I mean? And that's really difficult for a lot of good girls to do. So you don't think that. <laughs> you don't think that you. <laughs> you don't think that you could be a good girl and get a man to pursue without being an idiot, <laughs> without being a bad bee and a toxic bee. You don't think that you could just be flirtatious or there could be some playfulness there and you could go back and forth with a man to do the dance of dating and romance. You don't think that you could do that without being the idiot that you're describing right now. Oh, you gotta, you, you gotta be dumb in the first place. So, you know, what, <laughs> what you're actually describing is a modern woman and the things that they look for. <laughs> it's just, it, it just continues to get worse. I, I'm amazed. I really am. But my piece of advice is just watch what the women that they are following on Instagram and social media are talking about and posting and pretend to be like that. Just pretend. You don't have to actually be like that. Just pretend. But the women that they might be following that you're looking at on social media aren't talking about anything. So you, you know already off the bat, if these men are following these types of women and these women aren't talking about anything, then that's not the woman that you, that's not the man that you want. It's, it's simple. Why would you act like that woman when that woman isn't filled with anything? See how dumb that sounds? Because as long as you are a good girl and you define yourself as a good girl, men are going to wait until they have ran through all the women that they want to run through and then they're going to come pick you. And by then, you're going to be disgusted by them. You're going to be like, I don't even want you. You went through all these women and now you want a good girl. No, no, babe. That's not how it works. You got to pretend to be bad. Pretend to be a B-I-T-C-H and make him think that his life is going to suck without you. And you could walk away at any moment until you have him on luck. Then you could open up. Then you could start showing your love. Then you could start showing affection. Then they feel like they earned it. And then they value it even more. So don't be loving. Don't be good. Don't be giving right off the bat. Don't change yourself. Just pretend. Just pretend, okay? Love you guys. Yeah. Okay, pal. Whatever you say. That was a lot dumber than I thought it would be. And she... I don't know where she got that from. But that was incredibly stupid. 